Hi, my name is Janelle Shaw and I'm part of the CA Presales team. I want to talk to you today about a capability that's helpful in performance triage and tuning. And that is an APM capability called transaction tracing. So what is transaction tracing? Well, it's just kind of like the name sounds. It's tracing the execution of an individual transaction. Now that transaction could be very simple, meaning it executes maybe through a GVM and calls into a database, or more likely it's very complex. So there might be multiple Java processes that are interacting. There could be multiple databases, um, a layer of SOA technology like web services or messaging, ESB tiers, couldn't even be a mainframe on the back end. So it's important to understand, again, for an individual user transaction execution, where does that transaction execute and where is it spending its time? So let's take a look. Here you can see I'm logged into APM. I've selected a particular JVM instance that I care to analyze and I've selected the traces tab. Now in here is a list of all the transactions that were recorded and when you select any out of the list, you can then see the details for that particular trace. I selected a transaction trace. In this case, it's one that has a duration of 5,857 milliseconds. So that five seconds, almost six seconds, is represented here. You see the zero is the start of that stopwatch and the ruler across the top represents those five plus seconds. If you notice here, it happens to be one swim lane. If there were multiple JVMs or multiple processes supporting a single transaction, you would see multiple swim lanes to represent those JVMs or those processes. In this case, we're looking at a single JVM. So what you'll notice as I expand that swim lane and click on, an, on a row, you can see very quickly visually, and that's why this trace view exists, is that we have two back-end systems that get invoked from this particular JVM. So the first, does, uh, you can see it's just a sliver of the transaction time. As I hover over that, only 3% of this transaction time is spent on this authentication engine web service. Visually though, again, very easy to see that a single bottleneck exists. And when I hover, and even when I click on it, you can see the same details down below, that a second web service invocation to an order engine process, you can see that it gets invoked at 173 milliseconds into the transaction execution, but it's responsible for 97% of the total transaction time. That means that this web service call gets invoked very early into the transaction. It has a duration of five and a half seconds out of a 5.8 second transaction. So a significant time spent on that web service. So what that means is if we want to tune this transaction in any way, we need to attack the response time of this particular order engine service. So now let me select on a different transaction. In this case, a 5,546 millisecond transaction. I already have the swim lane expanded and you can see right away dramatic difference in the visualization, how this transaction is represented. Instead of a single bottleneck where the transaction spends time, you can see in this case, if I hover over any of these backend calls, these are individual SQL invocations. You can see the SQL or it could be a stored procedure and other applications that gets invoked. We mask out the parameters on purpose mostly for security reasons, but you can enable that if you choose. In this case though, what you see is that for any of these SQL that get invoked, and I can hover over these repeatedly so you can, you can see, even though the SQL itself is responding reasonably quick, so even a slow one is 104 milliseconds, the invocation, there's too many invocations to the database. So rapidly responding SQL, but too many of them called for a single transaction. What does that mean? It's not a database problem, it's the application is calling the database too frequently. If we look at the summary view, this is another way to see that same data. Is there a particular component where we're spending all the time, or is any component called excessively? And in this case, you can see over 800 calls to the database for a single transaction execution. So the last thing to touch on is how do you determine which transactions get traced? because it's certainly inefficient to store traces for every single transaction that your application processes. In this case, here's one example of how you might choose to trace transactions. It could be based on criteria such as response time, so transactions that are delayed or reaching a threshold. It could be just transactions for a particular user, a URL, those that are experiencing errors, or perhaps the cluster is performing unevenly. So you only have one particular instance that seems to be performing poorly, and you want to target transaction trace visibility to a particular JVM. 
So you can control very granularly which transactions get traced and stored for future analysis. Again, the tool is capable of tracing and storing everything, but it's kind of like DVR. You don't trace and, and DVR record every single show in case you might want to go back and watch something. You apply a filter so that it stores the information that you care about. The same concept applies to transaction traces.